Hey, what's going on, CoinOp TV subscribers? Robert Wapner here. In this video, I wanna talk about Dune 1 and Dune Part 2. I've seen them both. I know I'm a little late to the game, but I didn't wanna rush out and see Dune 2 uh, right away because I'm trying to avoid crowds and social distancing uh, still a bit, even though I went to see it in IMAX and it was a pretty full packed theater. Uh, so I guess, you know, the movie's just so popular, you can't really avoid it. So um, I saw Dune 1, uh, during the pandemic on HBO Max, and I watched it at home. I haven't seen that in the theaters. Uh, of course, Dune 1 came out, or Dune came out in 2021, directed by uh, Denny Villeneuve, and it stars uh, Timothy Chalamet, Rebecca Ferguson, Zendaya is in a, a part, um, Oscar Isaacs, uh, Jason Momoa, Josh Brolin, Javier Bardem, and a bunch more. Of course, you already know this. It's kind of a known thing, all the actors in this movie. Uh, I wrote down in my notes here, pretty entertaining, uh, even though it's a slow burn. I will preface this by saying that I'm a fan of the David Lynch Dune, and I've seen that version many a times uh, as a kid growing up. So I'm familiar with the Dune story. I've never read the books, although I, I have, well, I have kind of audio books of the first one. I got about three hours in, but I only did that after I saw the, the second movie. Um, but uh, so I'm familiar with the story, but I feel like the David Lynch stuff really helped clue me in to the inner workings of the story. And when I was watching Dune, the Dennis uh, Villeneuve version, I felt like a lot of it was missing, a lot of critical elements and were sort of missing from it. So it's almost like one of these things where you have to like piece things together, but uh, I wrote my notes here. It's pretty entertaining, slow burn, um, long movie, <laughs> interesting stylistic choices by the director. Uh, for me, uh, Rebecca Ferguson really stood out in the first movie, actually, I think out, outshining Timothy Chalamet. I'm a little on the fence with Timothy Chalamet now. It's interesting to see other people. I've been watching other reviews and reading about them, and they've been talking about how Timothy has kind of grown from uh, Dune 1 as an actor to, into Dune 2. And I did uh, sort of see that also myself. So it was interesting that they didn't shoot those back to back, uh, that he um, he got to sort of like grow in life, you know, and mature himself so that he can sort of portray that as uh, Paul Atreides uh, in these movies. Uh, the movie's super long. It doesn't explain much, like I was saying a second ago. So I'm assuming like it's meant for book readers or people to rewatch them and then watch analysis videos or maybe read the books after them and then rewatch these. Uh, my buddy, uh, Mike Schramm, he was sort of saying that these movies are meant for the future, uh, for people to rewatch uh, Dune 1 and 2 over and over again and to look back at them and reflect and ponder and question things. But does that make movies, does that make it a five-star movie? Does that make it amazing? I mean, I feel like it should be understood and, um, uh, you should be able to follow along the story and the nuances of things the first time around and then catch additional stuff the second and third time around. Let me know in the comments below your, your thoughts on uh, that. Uh, let's see. Uh, another note uh, is, uh, you know, and here's some, some spoiler things. No third, act, no third act climax. It's basically a three hour setup for the next movie. And a lot of us didn't know that this was going to be in parts. Uh, you know, the um, Legendary and HBO, they didn't really market it as part one on the posters and stuff. So when it ended and it came to the ending, it was just like, oh, okay, that's interesting. It's just going to sort of end here with uh, a little hand-to-hand -hand combat with uh, Paul and uh, leave you hanging. No big giant com um, climax there. So uh, disappointing. I give, I give it three stars. I, I say it's good. I like Dune. I've seen it twice. And I'm just, it didn't change my life. Now, let me talk about some of my notes. I have more notes here for Dune 2. So Dune 2, of course, uh, uh, Denis Villeneuve, same director. Again, uh, like I said, I saw this in IMAX with my buddy Mike Tran that I just gave a shout out to uh, a second ago there. Um, <clears throat> here's my hot take now uh, with uh, Dune 2 and IMAX. Everybody's like, gotta see this in IMAX. Uh, IMAX, that's the way to see it. So Dune 2 has a lot of subtitles. And I was thinking to myself while I was watching, I was like, Here's this big giant vertical scene and wide scene. It's like going floor to ceiling, a lot to look at, a lot of sand. And 70% of the movie, I'm just like reading the subtitles, which is like, you know, in the lower thirds of the movie. And I kind of thought to myself, I feel like I'm kind of cheated. I don't want to read subtitles with just this part of the movie. I want to see actors and things, you know, I don't want to zero in on reading. I want to sort of see. So that's the sort of my weird hot take 
with the IMAX experience. <laughs> Let me know if I'm, you know, berserk, going bizarre with that. Um, my buddy uh, said I needed to read faster, but <laughs> it's like, how, how fast can you read, you know? And can you read with one eye and look at IMAX screen with the other eyes at a thing? So Dune 2, Dune Part 2, starring Timothy Chalamet again, Rebecca Ferguson, uh, Sandeo gets a bigger role in this one as Shani. Austin Butler is uh, introduced as Fade, uh, the villain. Um, Josh Brolin back. Some spoiler information here with the casting. Javier Barden, Dave Bautista, um, Christopher Walken, Florence Pugh, and more, many more all-star cast. Um, so here we are with Dune 2, well, which is some are hailing as like the greatest cinema achievement ever. Um, I didn't feel that way. I enjoyed it. I also give Dune 2 three stars. Like, I liked it. Just uh, some of the things I just long and drawn out. Um, it's strange. I wrote my notes where sort of in this era of extremely long movies, long films like Dune and also Napoleon I just watched recently, Kills a Flower Moon. These like three and a half hour movies that are so long, but they seem to miss like crucial, critical moments, plot development, character moments, even in their extended time, that uh, I was just like, I don't know, did I miss something? Like, spoiler here, but like, Chani really switches her vibe in the movie and like, is like against Paul. And I was just like thinking to myself, I was like, did I miss some like dramatic moments here? Like, I know that things were sort of mentioned and said, but I felt like with the running time of this movie, uh, that, is a as a critical character development plot that uh seemed to have been skipped over and I'm, now i I'm, i've been reading and people are saying like chani movie is different than chani book and the way she's um the way she acts or her 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 decision making and stuff so i was like okay well he, he definitely went for departure with chani in this but she really just this balls the walls like angry at paul uh you know the second half of the movie and i was like okay what did i miss there i'm watching a three and a half hour movie here what scene did i miss and i didn't do a pee break so it wasn't the pee break i surprised that i made it through the movie um without the pee break uh so uh it, I, here's some more things from my notes this one it, you know pun intended crawls along at like a, a sandworm's pace um it's i you know, I don't know, like, again, a lot of people like guess this in the theater, IMAX. I think I enjoy the first Dune movie more because I watch it in my house, relax with my feet up, chill out, my dog next to me. I could take a pee break whenever I wanted to pause. I don't feel like these movies needed to be, get me, don't get me wrong, I'm a fan of cinema and movie and uh, celluloid and, you know, IMAX and film print, but um, I, I think they're kind of more enjoyable the second time around, you know, in your house, you know, watching them. So buy, buy the 4K Blu-rays and stuff like that. But um, I, I did I did feel the uh, some notes here about Dune 2 compared to Dune 1. I did feel like the artistic aesthetic and the design was actually uh, more of a treat in the first movie, maybe because there was more interiors and the second movie was uh, basically sand. <laughs> you know, the, you barely even saw like the uh, sand worms, you know, except for like their face, their their front, I don't know if it's a face, their mouths and uh, and their outer shell, I, you know. So uh, some of the ship designs were kind of the same. <clears throat> I didn't really like the design of the orb, the Emperor's Orb, I don't know if that's what it's called uh, at the end. I thought that looked kind of weird, but you know, these are all things that the uh, art team and the director are all doing, um, you know, intentionally. Although I think I would say I'd appreciate the art style aesthetic in the first movie. Uh, let's see, what did I write here? So yes, yeah, so I got some spoilers with Chani. Uh, the biggest complaint I have here with number two, why it didn't blow me away, was the third act. The, again, the third act felt rushed. And um, I'm thinking to myself, how is this movie like almost four hours? And the third act felt rushed. Like, where is the meat and potatoes of the third act? The things kind of just blew by. And uh, again, I went back and like read some critiques of the movie and people were sort of, uh, sorry, of the book. And people were sort of comparing that and they were saying, yeah, in the book, uh, Frank Herbert doesn't really dive that into the details. And maybe Denny was like, okay, uh, I'm going to kind of rush through. I mean, there is a big giant action scene but um you know the uh this this short sequence of uh, josh brolin and um uh josh brolin and uh dave batista <laughs> was um very brief and very disappointing i was like okay great we're gonna get uh, you know thanos and, uh, 
you know, this is going to like the Marvel battle there or something. But uh, yes, that that didn't happen. So why is that? My, my face is getting red here. I'm trying to like uh, go through this. But I know that anybody who watches this movie is just going to say, Rob, you're an idiot. How could you? Um, it's very polarizing when you give it your, uh, your thoughts, your true thoughts on a YouTube video. So I'm just uh, expecting uh, the worst. So I didn't hate, I didn't hate doing one and two. I may actually buy, buy these on 4K, uh, maybe when the third movie comes out and get like a little triple pack and sort of do like little weekends where I rewatch do one, two, and three. And um, maybe I'll have a better appreciation for them. But these are just kind of like my, my take, um, my impressions. I, I wrote my notes that maybe uh, I felt like certain actors had kind of like a limited shooting window or something so that maybe they could only be in so much. That's why things were kind of rushed. I would have preferred them milking more of the politics of the outer world than some of the stuff of the Frema. So if you're a book reader, let me know. Is that a thing to the politics of the other houses? Is that, it's gotta be a thing more in the books. I feel like it was not really, it was like sprinkled into the movie, but like, uh, especially at the end, the third act, the emperor, you know, the stuff with the emperor, I was like, okay, we're gonna get some uh, heightened tension from the uh, other houses out there. Uh, nothing. It just was like, all right, you know, we got to get that fight scene. We got to, we got to get that hand-to-hand -hand combat scene. And, um, that was cool. I enjoyed it. But, um, well, I, I don't know. I don't want these movies to be five hours, but if they're going to be three and a half hours, put, put all, put all the right ingredients into that stew to make the flavor, um, really, uh, you know, simmer. So there it is. Uh, just, you know, a video, the video nobody asked for on my YouTube channel, me talking about doing one and two, but there it is. I would be curious to see your thoughts in the comments below. Thanks a bunch for watching. For Coronap TV, we'll see you next time.